Hey, Jacob, how are you, man? I'm doing all right. So, I mean, I, I have to call you the comeback kid because, you know, you had six, I think it was six fights in a row. You lost one fight. And, of course, the naysayers are like, ah, oh, Jacob, Jacob Oldman, you know, he was six fights in a row. Don't worry about that. It was all hype. And then you came back and you had that very impressive win over, I think it was Shane Roller in the first round. Uh, when you went into that fight, did you, I mean, honestly, did you think that it was going to be that easy for you? No, no, I didn't know it was going to be that easy. As soon as I got a hold of him, I, I, I really didn't feel any strength. And it, it actually, I felt that the fight was going to be over pretty fast as soon as I head kicked him. He didn't, he kind of looked at me like, where did that come from? <laughs> so, so it, it was, I knew it was over as soon as I head kicked him. You know, I think a lot of people look at Jacob Oldman. I mean, even like my wife was commenting. She said he looks like that guy that you talk to at work or the guy down the street that you talk to, and then you see him in there and he's choking a guy out. Do you get that a lot? Do people tell you that a lot? Yeah, I get a lot of a lot of people telling me that I look like a, a tweep, a, uh, a little twerp at the gym, like a skinny little guy that has no strength. And, and it changes them once they get a hold of me. Well, you know, I mean, you are a strong guy. What's your do you diet like heavily, or is it just um, something you do right before the fight? Well, no, not really. I, I do it slow. I, I cut myself down. I, I start off at about one seventy five, one eighty, and I do it very slow over eight weeks. By the time the fight week rolls around, I, I walk in at one sixty eight, which is thirteen over, one sixty six. Hmm. No, one sixty eight, twelve over, and one sixty six is ten over. So I'm not cutting too much to fight the fight week. Are you a new, are you a uh, stickler for nutrition before or uh, regular day to day? Yeah, not as bad as Sean Shirt though. I uh, actually I cut out caffeine, cut out alcohol obviously, and then I cut out pop. So caffeine pop, and I don't eat after 7 p.m. Some are just some rules that I I do for myself to make weight. Well, for people out there who don't really know uh, the benefits of stuff like that. Not eating after 7 p.m., I mean, what does that do for an athlete? Well, for an athlete and as a person, when you eat after, after well, I go to bed at 8, 30, 9 o'clock. So eating that close to bed, it just it just goes right in your fat storage. So if you're, you're looking to cut weight, you want to go to bed at least somewhat hungry. If you're hungry, just drink a glass of water and you'll be good to go. And I need to come and live with you because my eating habits are nowhere near Volkman standards, man. Well... Yeah, well, then you got in your fridge. You, it's hard to. It's hard to cut that stuff out in snacks. I, I don't eat snacks. That's the hardest thing. You, you see some, my wife, she's a culinary, culinary student, so she bakes a lot of goods, like brownies and cookies and stuff like that. It's really hard to cut that stuff out. Well, i tell you one of the things that you said recently uh, that just made me laugh was, I mean, everybody knows you're outspoken. I'm sure you hear that a lot, but when a... <laughs> John Jones turned down the fight with Chael Sonnen. I mean, uh, it, 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 it basically, you just came out straight up to the Chael Sonnen is the true light heavyweight champion. I mean, I, I'm sure you were half joking, but uh, do, you, do you really believe that? Yeah, I believe that. I, I think I think Jones needs to, to pay everybody that, that lost their flights to the corners and, and lost their, their month wages. Um, I'm, I'm still planning on pickpocketing him when I see him. <laughs> also, on top of that, yeah, the UFC says, "Hey, we were we just didn't have enough fighters." And I, I don't know about you, but it seems to me there are a lot of fighters out there that fight maybe once or twice a year. Yeah, yeah, but it's the thing. The UFC they they have these fighters that are always on the main card, so they have they have these they're kind of like their favorite fighters. So it's kind of hard for for them to have that show because their favorite fighters weren't weren't ready for the fight and they weren't they weren't on the card the people weren't going to pay what is it per pay-per-view like 75 bucks they weren't going to sure. pay 75 bucks for some fighter they don't know because the UFC doesn't really show those guys on the main card and the people don't know them, know them as well does that make sense <laughs> yeah it does I mean it completely does like a They've got their guys that they know are draws, people that are going to, they're going to, they're going to bring people in, and then they put other guys that are those bonus draws, you know, if Chael Sonnen fights, then Jacob Volkman will draw this many more people on top of that, things like that. Yep, yep, exactly. Well, that, that's business, though. I, I don't blame UFC at all for that. That's, that's the way it has to be run. 
You know, it's funny, too. A lot of people don't even know Jake, Jacob Volkman. I mean, I know you've been on what? I think I've seen you on The Tonight Show, um, <laughs> Inside Edition. I no, I like wasn't a, on Inside Edition. I was going to be, but they never came out. I don't know why they never came out. I, I must have seen a pre-ad. Because remember, I think they did run an advertisement on TV that said um, Jacob Volkman, you know, on Inside Edition. But I don't think it ever, like you said, I don't think it ever showed up. <laughs> that would have been awesome. I don't know if I could have handled that, though, because they're very controversial. Well, you know, in the voice, too. Some other dirt. On Inside Edition, Jacob Volkman, you know how they do the, the voice? They make everything. Yeah. Jacob Volkman almost arrested by the Secret Service. I mean, I, was, I, I really want to make that clear to people who are listening to, B, to BJPen.com right now. Yeah, it seemed like a small thing, but that was a very big deal. I mean, it, it really was over some comments that were... So harmless, man. In the long run, I, I mean, I know, I know you, you probably your lips are sealed on that kind of stuff, but uh, not you really. Know, I, oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, but they didn't make you swear to secrecy or anything like that. No, no, they just wanted to make sure the guy was really nice about the whole thing. He came out, pulled me out of wrestling practice. I was actually coaching um, youth wrestling, and he pulls me out, and he's like, "Yeah, you're not planning on going to D.C. to harm the president, are you?" I'm like, "Are you crazy? I can't even afford a plane ticket. I can't." I, no. But what, what, what then we were just talking. He, he apologized about coming out. He, he said he had to because someone called in and wanted, and someone called into DC, and so he had to come out and check me out and make sure I was not a crazy person. I, I know, man. And, and you know, here's the sad part is I think the quote was something like that: if you take his belly button off and and um, put a piece of glass or whatever. But if you would have said <laughs> mirror, if you would have said mirror, I think it would have been okay. I think. I think it was the fact that it was piece of glass instead of mirror. So I just remember watching that. We're talking about, right? <laughs> yeah, I was laughing so hard when I heard that. And so when I read, I was like, I thought it was a joke. Like, you know how Bleacher Report will do some stuff and they'll just be like, something funny? And I thought, oh, man, Secret Service. Yeah, that's pretty funny, man. And then someone confirmed, and I'm like, holy crap, dude. <laughs> Jacob Volkman. UFC fighter, not even in the political arena, you know, not even a, a, a wacko or nut job. They'll go investigate him. So, you know, I was kind of afraid to talk to it, uh, talk about it to anybody because I didn't want them to come and ask me, you know. <laughs> you don't get any flack for that anymore, do you? No, I think it's kind of funny. I'm, I'm known as, in the area, I'm known as the Obama guy. <laughs> it's just kind of funny, I think. Even though the I don't Obama like guy? guy. Yeah, you're the Obama guy, the UFC, uh, UFC fighter, Obama guy. Yeah, that's me. Well, ha- have you been approached by, uh, like, Mitt Romney or any? I'm serious about, like, Romney or Ryan or their camp or anything? No, no. I think they don't like me because I'm, I want people to vote for myself. <laughs> they they might might say something if I say, yeah, go vote for Romney. But I'm, I'm trying to get people to vote for me. I, I was kind of fed up with Romney by a straw. I watched the straw polls. And he was right. just beating on Newt, Newt Gingrich, and I was getting fed up with that. He wasn't really saying how he was going to fix Obama's problems. He was just kind of beating on Newt, and I didn't like that at all. Well, what about I'm not going to support him. What about a Volkman Sonnen ticket? <laughs> I think Sonnen beat me in a, in a debate. He's much better at, better at the debate and the, and the PR stuff than I am. Well, I think he could talk you guys into the White House. I think I think he could definitely talk you guys into the White House. And then when you could be like the Dick Cheney, who's like the shadow master, and you kind of are the puppet from behind, you know, c- controlling what Chael does. He just is the mouthpiece, right? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Nobody can control him. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you think about him being the coach on The Ultimate Fighter? I did not know that. I, I really don't follow too much of fighting I watched. I actually watched Bellator the other day because one of my teammates, Mike Richmond, was is, he's fighting in the featherweight tournament for Bellator right now. So what? Um, the guy was like, what team are you? What team are you repping right now? Are you still with the same one? Yep, I, uh, I'm representing the the academy, the Minnesota Martial Arts Academy in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota. One with Sean Shirt, or one EJ Penn, <laughs> and. For the title fight there. Well, it's weird because a lot of these guys, you know, they they switch so much. And I'll talk to them like one month, and then like three months later, I'm talking to them, and they tell me they've 
I'm out at, you know, AK, well, I got AK is a bad example, but I'm out at, like, uh, you know, Vegas Martial Arts Academy or something like that. They just hop from place to place, man. I don't, I don't know about you, but as a fighter, I would think you'd want a solid home where you just go visit people. Yeah, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of that just because of the fact that that's not the way I learn very good. I need somebody that knows my weaknesses and knows what to do to fix them. You, you hop around these people. Of course they're going to know a lot of techniques, these, these other gyms. If I went to other gyms, they know technique, but they don't know what my weaknesses are as much as my, my coaches that I've been men with for years, if that makes sense. I'm not a yeah. fan of jumping gyms. Well, you know, let's say you stay at the same gym. Let's say you retire. Do you think you would ever go into politics? No, I can't stand politics because there's so many things that irritate me, and it's hard not to bring it home and take it on on your family. <laughs> I mean, I, I just assumed, like, you know, Mayor of Oakland, we could start there, work our way up, you know, eventually re- Representative or Senator Volkman, and, and before you know it, you could be CEO, President of the UFC, and I think that would be awesome. <laughs> It takes a lot of money to run, too. I, I bought 50 yard signs for my last fight just to promote the fight, and it was 260 Excuse bucks for 50 me. yard signs. Excuse me. You, you, you Secretary yeah. Sean Watts, let me in. L- let me tell you something, Jake Volkman. You have a better. I, I'm going to vote first for Mayor McCheese before I'm going to vote for Mayor Volkman. <laughs> president Volkman. Future President Volkman. Who is this? Yeah, future President. And how are you going to become president to make some threats to beat up that light-skinned black guy, uh, is, uh, Obama? Jacob, Jacob <laughs> you, let me you, introduce you. Uh, Hinato, Jacob, this is Hinato Laranja. Well, nice to meet you, kind of. Well, uh, they, they, that, <laughs> that makes one of us. All right. And let me tell you Someone something. Someone needs to have a beer. I, I, I got some butt later yeah, over here. You want to have a beer? beer. Hey, I, I'm too far away from you. I, I have a bone to pick with you because you like to call out that skinny, light-skinned black guy because you know you can beat that guy. But why don't you don't uh, try to fight somebody on size or bigger like me? <laughs> I'm not picking on him because he's black or he's skinny. I'm picking on him because of his policies. He's the president. He's in charge of a lot of stuff. So just jealous because he's light-skinned. And let me tell you something, Jake Balkman. I you think name is Christmas? But when I get through, you're going to be so black and blue, they're going to call your nickname Kwanzaa. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> I look like a black guy. They're going to think uh, Obama is uh, Obama going to look like Mitch Harmony next to next to you. And I know you probably secretly like that guy. He's me and, and high end. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what to say about that. <laughs> I bet you don't. But before you was having a big mouth before I come on, but now you, you, you think twice because you think about the consequence. And the only thing I like about no, you I just is can't that you, you. Yeah, I can't understand I you either. You sound like you was you sound like an extra from the movie uh, Fargo. <laughs> I actually live about four, like that, four hours from Korean. Fargo. I grew up I grew up about an hour from Fargo, so that would make sense. You sound like a Korean guy who was trying to try to uh, make out with the, the girl at the, the, the restaurant. But that's neither here nor there. And what, what are you going to do if we fight? You're going to use your chiropractor? You're going to try to crack my, uh, try to uh, adjust my neck, something like that? When, I, when we roll? What are we talking about here? Yeah, if, if I'm going to fight you, what, what do you think you're going to use? Uh, you're going to use your, your wrestling, and then what, you're going to use your chiropractic skills to, to adjust my adjust my back and my neck. I'm going to grab your big toe and pull it off and put it down your throat. So that's, you're going to do that, huh? I, I, I like to yep. see that, my brother, because I'm going to adjust your neck, but I'm going to do it permanently. You understand me? And I'm not going to use no, I'm not going to use some soft music that you like to put and like to lull people to sleep with some Sade music while you put some, some incense and put some needles to that guy's uh, back. I actually like Molly Crew. Motley Crue is my uh, my intro song. You ever heard of Motley Crue? Right, I, uh, yeah, I know that guy. They they have that guy, Brett Brett uh, Michael. That guy who uh, looked like a transvestite. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. You better watch your mouth because 
you know, that guy, I know you like that guy, Chell Sign, but I'm going to deal with him first. And you better believe you, me, if you was, can't deal with Efrain Escudero, who's almost choked you, then you're going you're gonna to be in for a big surprise when you get to, into my choke. You can't, you can't believe that. I'm going to send you back to White Bear Lake. Uh, in, in, Bear a, Lake. in a, a, Bear Lake. Yeah, that's right, White, White Bear. Bear Lake. Yeah, that's because, that's yep. because they have only white people who live there. They don't even have some Puerto Ricans who are no blacks. I have no idea. Well, I don't understand what you just said. You're I don't speaking understand a lot, what you said either. Really speaking very clearly. I'm 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 speak more clearly than you. You sound like you want to drink some some uh, Ernesto and Julio Gallo. Julio Gallo? Why is this? God, I can't I, hear what he's saying. Sean, I, I I'm tired of this guy to to disrespect my accent, and he don't have his respect for Brazilian people. And I I mean I'm no, not gonna vote for that guy. The volume's not loud enough. My brother, I'm I'm not gonna. Sean, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Renato. I just want to make sure that you're not going to... I want to encourage the, the American people to to stay away from the the, the, the bulk money and signing cards uh, this uh, November. I want you to, to, to do the, the right thing and to stay away from that guy because he don't know what he's talking about and he looks like the bad guy from the, the Warriors. We never talked about who, any policies. You never I talked don't care about, about any policies, policies, my friend. Let me tell you well, something. You look, like the guy from, you look like the guy from The Warriors, that movie, when the guy was shoot the guy Cyrus and then tried to blame it on the guy in The Warriors. And he said, it was him. He was killed Cyrus. God, I, I know what you're up to. You ain't no good. And, Sean, next time, <laughs> I don't know why you support that guy. But I, I mean, had it. And you better, you better hope that you can make this up to me. I don't care if it's your birthday. And let me tell you something else. Goodbye to you and to my fans. I'm sorry. And good night and carajo.